Hey folks, I'm Dennis. Thanks for watching my video. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the APIM or the APIM unit um, on the SYNC 3, uh, the, the dash radio, uh, nav system, all that stuff. It's the brain behind that on a 2018 F-150. The procedure ought to be very similar on a 2015 to about a 2020. Uh, this is a 2018, so it'll be specific to that. So thanks for watching, let's get started. Everybody's dash might be a little bit different. I have the B&O sound system, so this set, this uh, speaker cover will be a little different on certain models. This is a Lariat. You may have a different one. It'll All of this uh, assembly comes apart pretty much the same way, at least on a 2018. Like I said, you may have some minor differences depending on your year model, but it should be real similar. In the description below, under the video I'm gonna leave a list and links for all the things that you need to get this job done. First thing I'm gonna do is take some masking tape and I'm just gonna cover this area. I don't know if I'm gonna need it right here but I'm gonna cover this area also because I don't want to scratch my plastic. And then I'm gonna take a flat bladed trim, well flat and hooked uh, stiff trim tool to pop this out. Once you get in there, then you can pop it out. And there's a there is a a tab in the middle. You don't want to break that. So try to get to either side to pop that out. And then don't stick anything into the middle either because that's where your, your tweeter is, your speaker. Also, I wouldn't recommend, I just started to do that, but I wouldn't recommend grabbing around this lip where the, the grill is because you'll separate it. You'll end up breaking that plastic and separating it from the, um, the frame on this cover. There you go. So then just take, once you get that front pop loose, just go into the side and get in there and pop that out. And you can you can see it's got those four uh, friction fit tabs. You don't have to take the speaker out. You can leave it there. This is also a good time to clean up dust. Just be careful with your speaker. You don't want to break that membrane on the top. But then there's uh, there's two hex head screws right here. Everything. I believe everything that you have to take apart is seven millimeter. So it's easier to have a, a socket and a, like a quarter inch drive or something like that. You wanna be careful when you're, when you're wrenching these two not to hit your windshield and crack it. You could use a nut driver or a, I've got a quarter inch ratchet socket set, seven millimeter socket and then uh, Just get in there and take these two out and like I say you want to be careful not to smack your windshield because you could probably crack it. This is a two inch extension. If you got like a one inch extension probably be better. With those two screws out you also want a piece of masking tape right here along this line, this trim line. You gotta pop this front out. You can, some of them, if they're not too tight, you can just pry it up with your hands and pop it out. I can't ever quite get mine to come out, but I'll lift it high enough to get my trim tool in there. Like you can see, I can, I can get it up this far or so and then get this trim tool in. And then you can pop it loose and it's going to make you think you're breaking it, but you won't. You do that and then you can get this. You can get this tray out of the way. It's easier to go ahead and pull these screws out, obviously. They're, they're wanting to catch. You can set that off to the side. You don't have to disconnect your speaker or anything. Then same thing take your uh, seven millimeter socket and take these two screws here out. 
they're the same screws that hold this tray in. Pull your masking tape off. All right, so <clears throat> get those two screws out. You gotta lift this up a little bit because it's got a couple catches on the back of this flange or underneath this flange. And again, it's gonna feel like you're breaking it, but you won't. Well, hopefully you won't. <laughs> Just and watch your watch your fingernails. It's easy to catch on there. So lift that up get under it and then just pop it out and then work your way down the whole face plate will pop out like so and then you can disconnect all the cables if you want I'm really only going to disconnect these top ones um, for the uh, for the buttons up here so I can get this kind of swing it out of my way all right I hope you can see this but on these these plugs for these buttons all of this big section is just the housing for the buttons and then this part here is the plug and on this side there's a little catch you can just catch with your fingernail and push it in it's hard to do it film it at the same time you just pull that catch in toward the center of the plug and it pops right out and you can see that there's the little catch this one. there we go so I've just got to remember on mine you can mark them if you want mine's got a piece of white tape on the the left one so I'm gonna remember it that way and then I'm gonna tuck these back out of the way and then I'm going to rotate this down out of my way like that. You could unplug these if you want, the lower ones. I'm not going to just because I don't want to. Okay, so I changed views on you so you can see this better. So you got six screws, three on each side. They're also seven millimeter. You just got to take them out. You're gonna need a pair of needle nose pliers or something to get in there, or a magnet to get in there and get that screw out. Now, when you pull this unit out, um, you're gonna reuse your touch screen, so you want to be careful with it, where you set it, and um, how you handle it. The whole thing will come out and you've got I'm not sure if you can see this without tearing up that screen I'm gonna see if I can show you the back of this all right obviously this is upside down because I've got it tilted you've got this main cable um, you've got uh, You've got this one and then you've got this is just a jumper so you don't have to mess with it and there's a each one's got a different kind of release on it so this one you might have to have a screwdriver to pop it up I'm gonna before I do any of this I'm going to put a rag under that touch screen so I don't jack it up I've just got a soft cloth this one's approved by mama. This is a, uh, that's an old dish rag, not a new one, or a dish towel, not a new one. So I'm okay to use it working on cars. You take, there's a, a catch right here on the inside of this gray lever. You just push it down a little bit and you can flip that lever up. That'll disconnect the contacts on that plug. The catch on this one is uh, right here. This is right here and it's a little hard to press down. Sometimes you can get it with your thumb. Sometimes you might have to take like a little small screwdriver or something and press it down. 
it just presses toward the cable. And then you can pop it out. You see that? Maybe, yeah. So, you press that down. Same thing, you might have to, you might have to hold a screwdriver on it to press it down and then it'll come off the the whole blue thing comes off so now you've got your now you've got your unit out so I'm going to move my towel to right here so I'm just gonna set my towel right here on the console and set my touchscreen down and then all we have to do next is take um, these three screws out here 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 and I think that's all there is I don't think there's a fourth one because that's where that connector is yep it's just those Oh, we also have to take, sorry, we also have to disconnect this yellow, um, actually it's going to be easier to just, better to disconnect this because this is going to stay with the touch screen. So your other blue one, you just, same thing, you kind of pull that catch in and um, work it loose. There you go, like that. So this will stay with the touch screen. So then we're going to take these three screws out with a Phillips screwdriver. Number two Phillips ought to do it. The For reference, these pins are on the top. Um, these pins here are on the top because they go in here. Anyway. Yeah, that's the APM. It's off. Something I didn't mention that I should have earlier. Before you start pulling all this out, I would ground myself um, just to uh, be safe with electronics. Um, touch something metal in your truck or your car um, to uh, eliminate any static on your hands. And um, then you can get started. You can also disconnect your battery uh, under the hood. I didn't do mine, um, but uh, probably should. So here's my new APM. And I say new, the, I'm gonna leave a link below for the, the company that I bought mine from. It looks like it's probably um, a refurbished or reprogrammed uh, APM, which is fine with me as long as it works. They have to program these using your VIN number. So if you do go to buy one and they don't tell you that they need your VIN number to program it, I would be skeptical because it's probably not going to have all your features. Um, if they've got your VIN number and they can program accordingly, it's going to have all your features and all your accessories and things like that are going to work. Um, the dealers are quoting people anywhere from $1,000 to eighteen hundred dollars to fix these things um the company i bought this is 2020 mid mid-year 2023 i bought this for 490 um and um they've got 100 percent reviews uh everybody that's bought them has been happy and it, they don't look like they're paid reviews or anything they look like they're legit reviews so anyway that's where i got mine um like i said i'll list it i'll list it below under the video in the description So same thing, ground yourself, um, you know, touch the body or something like that on your truck to eliminate any static, which I've already done. And don't confuse the old pin with the new one, or the old APIM with the new one. If y'all, we have a, a newly hatched Hawks flying around. If you hear that on my video, that's what that's all about. All right, so it's gonna go on this way and you can 
tell that because of this pigtail and it goes um, Yeah, here, here, yep, yeah, here. So it's gonna go on like this, same three mounting screws. If you, um, it's there, I don't know if you can see this real well on the video or not, but on your screw holes, they're, they've got, one of them has no locator pin, one of them has an elongated pin, and the other one has a round pin. So your round pin is here. Well, both of these are round. And then this one has nothing. So it's if you get disoriented or whatever, it's easy to tell um, which one goes where because it will, once you line the holes up, it'll actually kind of pop into place on those pins. And if it doesn't, you might have it turned around wrong. The little round one here is the hardest to get because it's it's just the size of the the pin all right there we go so then the rest is really just doing it all in reverse i'm going to record the whole process of doing it in reverse in case you want to watch it but everything else is the same as it was taking it apart This connector is keyed about three different ways. So it's real particular how it goes in there. So you just have to get it lined up just right. Once you get it lined up, it'll slip right in and then make sure your little latch catches. I'm gonna set mine down like this on this rag and get these connections made again. I'm gonna do this one last because it's the shortest. Um, Slide that in and throw the latch and make sure it catches. <clears throat> so you have to be aware of this. Notice my original one's only got one connector. This hole is empty. So this one has two sockets. I don't know if this would plug into that one. It looks like it would. So be careful that you, you know, make sure you plug it into the right one. That'll go in there and again, make sure that catches. And then the same with, uh, with this one. The latch on this goes toward the bottom. So just make sure that you hear each latch catch. Then you can Slip that all back in there. Make sure those two pins up here that I showed you earlier slip all the way in and then your these rails are gonna get flush up against the, the uh, structure behind there for you to put your screws back in. I'm gonna leave that rag there just in case I drop it. Which I don't intend to, but you never know with me. And then the way I start screws on something like this is I'll take my extension off of my ratchet if you've got a magnetic nut driver a seven millimeter nut driver or a magnetic socket it'll be a whole lot easier for those bottom ones you can also if you don't have any other way of doing it you can tear off a little bit of your masking tape and put it right put it right there just to hold it on i'm going to try to get it without having to do all that but I'm going to be super confident and put it all back together. We'll see how it goes. So take that, line that, kind of get that line back up on the bottom. that line back up on the bottom and then plug in your um,
plug in your plugs for these buttons up here. Just make sure they snap in. Snap all that back in place. go don't drop a screw down in there if you don't have to which I just did be careful not to drop a screw down in there right. those in there get those two screws back here back in and then finally take this and pop it back in there you go good to go So you may have to uh, go through and do a, some of the initial setup like you would normally have to do uh, with a new vehicle, but um, all of your features and everything should work. I'd go through and check them just to make sure, and if they don't, you know, contact your supplier. But um, and the screen may actually look a little bit different too. Mine's a little bit updated, which is fine with me, but um, they tell me, I'm going to find out here in a minute, they tell me that if you got serious, it should still be working fine. You shouldn't have to do anything. Um, and then all your uh, accessories and features should work. So anyway, that's it. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. It takes about a half an hour or so. Please give me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button below. And uh, as always, I really appreciate you watching. I hope to see you back soon. Take care and God bless you.